One of my favorite painters is Gustav Klimt. He's an Austrian. He died in 1918. I find him very interesting because he paints in gold, not the color gold, but real liquid gold. I find him very fascinating. I remember being in Vienna Art Museum a few years back, sitting before some of his paintings. And each of the days that I was there, I returned to the museum to sit in front of a particular painting. And each time I returned to that painting, I saw something new, something refreshing. Perhaps you have experienced this in different areas of your life. So as we come to the close of ordinary time, we've got about three more weeks of ordinary time, we review our faith. Oh, we should renew our faith. Can we say that we have had some new insights? Is this something new? Is this something refreshing? Or have we just acquired some information about the biblical readings? about our religious ancestors, the people of Israel? Or did we just learn something about this man from Nazareth, ministry of Jesus? Did we just learn something about the early church? Or have our eyes really been opened? Have we been enabled to leave behind, as the Gospels said in the last couple of weeks, Leave behind what prevents us from getting closer and closer to this man that we're supposed to love so dramatically. To abandon, abandon the trappings of our lives, unlike the rich man of last week. Have we accepted more genuinely the Christian responsibilities that are ours because of those waters of baptism? Has there been any change in our personal lives, in our relationships with others, in the workplace, in the family? To what degree, if any, have I been transformed into Christ? This is serious business. Or am I still blind in so many areas of my life? Or like Bartimaeus, must I so often yell out, Master, I want to see. I want to see. I beg you that I am going to be a little personal this morning. Among the many, many blind areas in my spiritual life, perhaps the one that bothers me the most is the inability to come to the profound realization how much God loves me. Not just loves me, but loves me with a dynamic and a very, very personal way. If I were the only person in the universe, God could not love me anymore. But I don't realize that. I want to see. I'm like Bartimaeus. The Bible speaks often about God's love. They call it steadfast love. You know what steadfast love is? Steadfast love is love forever. If somebody loves you with steadfast love, you are blessed. It's always the same. Oh, mom might get angry at me and not like me for 10 minutes if I break her favorite dish or her vase. Your boyfriend or girlfriend may not like you for a few moments because you've said something unkind, disappointed that person. Your employer may not like you for the whole day because you slept in and they were short of workers at the restaurant. But God will always love you. God will always love me. No matter, no matter what I do. 
steadfast love. Jesus, just last week or the week before, he saw the rich man walk away because he didn't want to give any of his stuff to the poor. The scriptures tell us. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. Peter denied Jesus three times. And the Lord looked at Peter. And that look of love allowed Peter, the tough fisherman, to run away and cry. Jesus forgave him and made Peter number one. Jesus loved the woman with the bad reputation when she poured perfume on his feet at a dinner party given by the Pharisees. And he made her feel very comfortable among her harshest critical guests. Jesus loved her. Jesus loved Thomas, the doubter, and did everything he possibly could to get Thomas to believe, and Thomas believed. In the Hebrew Testament, God showed ultimate love, steadfast love to David, who sent his top general to harm's way in the front lines to be killed so that he, David, could marry his wife. God loved David and forgave him and anointed him the second king of Israel. I am blind to this kind of God love. I don't know about you. I wish I could get in touch with it. I have to work and appreciate the love God shows me through the Son, Jesus, if I let him. A person accepts love only from someone that he or she trusts. So you and I can trust Jesus and depend on him for that steadfast love, never-ending, never-ending love. And for this, Master, I want to see. The second issue that I share with you that avoids me is the reality of God's presence in my life. This is a struggle that I have been sharing with some of the people who go to Mass every day during the week. I hope we had some fun doing that. God is everywhere. Did you ever think, did you ever think and realize you cannot be alone? Did you ever think of that? I can never be alone. If I were the only person in the world, I am not alone. God is everywhere. Psalm 139 says it so well. Where could I go to escape your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I climbed the mountains, you were there. If I flew to the point of sunrise, you were there. Or if I crossed the sea, you were there. If I asked darkness to cover me and light to become night around me, you are there. You created me, my being, and you knit me in, together in my mother's womb. You know me through and through from having watched my bones grow. God is always with me. I realized how anemic my faith is in this area. After coming across a story this past week or so, in his book, Telling Secrets, the novelist Frederick Berner reflects on his father's sudden, surprising, and inexplicable suicide when Buchner was just a young boy. 
He writes, quote, God did not will what happened that early November morning in Essex Falls, New Jersey, but I believe that God was present in what happened. I cannot guess how God was present with my father. I can guess much better now, utterly abandoned by God, my father must have felt, if he felt anything about God at all. But my faith, as well as my prayer, is that God was with my dad and continues to be present with my dad in ways beyond my understanding and my guessing. I can speak with some assurance, he continues to write, only of how God was present in that dark time for me in the sense that I was not destroyed but came out of it with scars I bear to be sure. But also somehow the wiser and stronger for it. How often you and I, end of quote, how often you and I shout out, where is God? And all of a sudden we find out someone we love has terminal cancer. Where is God? Another war, where is God? A tragedy, where is God? It's some kind of an infirmity, where is God? You do that and I do that too. I've come to the realization that sometimes we become so angry and despairing with God for where we think God is not that we fail to realize where God is. Amazing, I can never be alone. Master, I want to see. 